Section 10.1, Sequences, Series, and Sigma Notation. A sequence is an ordered list of numbers, like 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Each number is known as a term. In this case, a sub 1 would be 2. a sub 2, the second term, would be 4. Uh, a sub 3 is 6, and so on. A finite sequence contains a finite number of terms. In other words, the sequence stops. It, this one stops at 10. An infinite sequence contains an infinite number of terms. And we denote that this is an infinite sequence by doing dot, dot, dot. A sequence can be defined explicitly using an explicit formula. An example, an explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence. And this happens to be an arithmetic sequence because to get the next term, we are adding 2. So an explicit formula could be a sub n equals a sub 1, the first term, plus n minus 1 times the common difference. And in the example we have, the common difference is 2. So if you wanted the fifth term, you take the first term, which would be 2 in this case. We start with 2. And then we add, uh, so 2 plus, we want the fifth term, minus 1. And the common difference in this case is 2. So 2 plus 4 times 2, that's 2 plus 8. Apparently the fifth term is 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The fifth term is 10. Find terms of sequences. Find the next four terms of the sequence. Now we just have to find a pattern. In this case, we add 5 every time. And we want the next four. So the next four are 22, 27, 32, and 37. And this happens to be arithmetic because we are adding 5 every time. Letter B, find the next four terms of the sequence. We just have to find a pattern. Uh, here we're adding 3, adding 5, adding 7. And we could keep going on like that. That's the pattern. But there's another pattern here. 2 is 1 squared plus 1. 5 is 2 squared plus 1. 10 is 3 squared plus 1. So then the 17 is 4 squared plus 1. And we're supposed to find the next 4. So we have 5 squared plus 1. That's 26. 6 squared plus 1. 37, 7 squared plus 1 is 50, and then 8 squared plus 1 is 65. So those are the next four terms. Find the first four terms of the sequence given by. This is an explicit formula, and we want the first four terms. a sub 1 is 2 times 1 times negative 1 to the 1. So that ends up being negative 2. The second term is 2 times 2 times negative 1 squared. Now that'll be positive 1, so we have 4. a sub 3 is 2 times 3, negative 1 to the third. Well now the, this is going to be negative, negative 1 to the third is negative. So we have negative 6, and then the fourth term is 2 times 4, times negative 1 to the fourth. And that's going to be positive, uh, so we have an answer of 8. Sequences can also be defined recursively. Recursively defined sequences give one or more of the first few terms and then define the terms that follow using those previous terms. The formula defining the nth term of the sequence is called a recursive formula or a recurrence relation. One of the most famous ones is the Fibonacci sequence. So they tell you that the first one is 1, the second one is 1, and then you get the rest of them. A sub n is take the, next, the one before plus the, the second one before. So 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, that's 8, and so on. Recursively defined sequences. Find the fifth term of the recursively defined sequence, where a sub 1 is 1, and the term you want is take the previous one, add 2 times n minus 1, where n is greater than or equal to 2. So now in order to get the, to the fifth term, we have to get to the fourth term. So let's see, a sub 1 is 1. Then we have, um, let's go back. So a sub 1 is equal to 1. a sub 2 is uh, a sub n minus 1. So go back to the first one. That's 1 plus 2 times 2 minus 1. So that's 1 plus 4 minus 1. That's 4. Then a sub 3 is equal to, go back to the previous term, which is 4 plus 2 times 3 minus 1. So that's 4 plus 6 minus 1. That's going to be 9. Now here's the fourth term. 
uh, we have the previous term, 9, and then plus 2 times 4 minus 1. So 9 plus 8 minus 1, that is 16. And then the fifth term is equal to, take the previous one, 16, plus 2 times 5 now and minus 1. So that's 16 plus 10 minus 1, that is 25. In lesson 1-3, you examined the end behavior of graphs of functions. You learned that as the domains of some functions approach infinity, the ranges approach a unique number called a limit. As a function, an infinite sequence may also have a limit. If a sequence has a limit such that the terms approach a unique number, then it is said to converge. If not, the sequence is said to diverge. So if the sequence is approaching a value, some certain value, we say it converges. If it's shooting off to infinity or down to negative infinity, we say that the function diverges. Determine whether each se sequence is convergent or divergent. Now we can take an explicit formula and we can find out whether it converges or diverges by using a calculator. So we go to the mode, so we hit mode button, put it in sequence mode, and we want the, the, all the points dotted. We don't want them connected. Uh, and then if you put it in sequence mode, when you hit Y equals on your calculator, you get this, uh, you get this screen. You leave the N min at 1, and you put the formula in U of N. Now when you do that, it's going to plot the points. It's going to start at 1. So if we plug 1 in, it's negative 3 times 1 plus 12. That's equal to 9. So here's the point 1, 9. Then when you plug 2 in, you get negative 6 plus 12, that's 6. So here's the 6. Now this is not leveling off. If this were to start leveling off like this, maybe to 0, then uh, we would say that this is converging to 0. But this particular uh, function just keeps going down to negative infinity. So this one diverges. Letter B, A sub 1 is 36, A sub 2 the rule is take the previous one, multiply by negative one half, so that's going to be negative 18. A sub 3, negative half of that is going to be a positive 9. A sub 4 is negative 9 halves. A sub 5 is positive 9 fourths. So look what's happening graphically. For 1, we're up all the way up here at, all the way up here at, let's say, 36. And then at 2, we're down here at negative 18. And then 3, we're up here at 9. And at a sub 4, we're, that's actually 4 and a half. So the next one, we're at 4 and a half. Well, we're going above the x-axis, then below, and then above and below. But this, the dots, the points are getting closer and closer to 0. So this one converges. For letter C, let's use our calculator. We go to mode. And we, we have this in sequence mode and dotted. So let's go to y equals, and we're going to plug in negative 1 raised to the n, uh, then times n, and then we're going to divide that by 4n plus 1. And let's just go zoom 6 on the standard graph and see what we get. And there's really not much that we can see because a sub 1 is equal to negative 1 to the 1 times 1 over 5. So the very first one is 1 fifth. Let's change our window. Uh, we can go 1 to 50. And uh, we can go x min 0 to 50. And we can keep the y at negative 1 to 1. Let's graph this. When we graph this, we notice that if n is odd, this, uh, the graph is approaching negative one-fourth, and if n is even, the graph is approaching one-fourth. Well, you can't approach two values, so this diverges. Series. A series is the indicated sum of all the terms of a sequence. Like sequences, series can be finite or infinite. A finite series is the indicated sum of all terms of a finite sequence, and an infinite series is the indicated sum of all the terms of an infinite sequence. So here's the sequence, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. The series is, take that sequence and just add all the numbers up. So there's a finite sequence, and an infinite sequence has an infinite series. The sum of the first 10 terms of a series is called the nth partial sum, and is denoted by S of n. 
The nth partial sum of any series can be found by calculating each term up to the nth term and then finding the sum of those terms. So we're going to find the fourth partial sum of this. So a sub 1 is equal to negative 2 to the 1 plus 3, which is 1. a sub 2 is negative 2 squared plus 3, which is 4 plus 3, which is 7. a sub 3 is negative 2 to the 3rd plus 3, which is negative 8 plus 3, which is negative 5. And then a sub 4 is negative 2 to the 4th plus 3, which is 16 plus 3, which is 19. So s sub 4, the fourth partial sum is add those four together. 1 plus 7 uh, minus 5 and then plus 19. So 8 minus 5 plus 19 and we have 3 plus 19, 22. Since an infinite series does not have a finite number of terms, you might assume that an infinite series has no sum. This is true for the series below. Infinite sequence, 1, 4, 7, 10. Here's the infinite series and the sequence of first four partial sums. So here's the first four partial sums of that. However, some infinite series do, not ha do have sums. For an infinite series to have a fixed sum s, the infinite sequence associated with this series must converge to zero. Notice the sequence of partial sums in the infinite series below appears to approach a sum of 0.1 repeating or 1 ninth. So the sequence is going to zero. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Now if you take the infinite series and you add those, all those up, you get 0 0.11111111, which is going to 1 ninth. So an infinite sequence can have, or an infinite series can have a sum. We will take a closer look at sums of infinite sequences in Lesson 10.3. Series are often more conveniently notated using the uppercase Greek letter sigma. A series written using this letter is said to be expressed using summation notation or sigma notation. Sigma notation for any sequence, a1, a2, a3, a4, the sum of the first k terms is denoted by, there's the sigma notation. And you're going to go from 1 to k in this case of a sub n. So you have the terms, add them up. That's what the sigma means. Where n is the index of summation, k is the upper bound of summation, and 1 is the lower bound of summation. In this notation, the lower bound indicates where to begin, where you're going to start. In this case, we're going to start at 1. And this one, this would indicate an infinite series. Uh, where to begin summing the terms of the sequence, and the upper bound indicates where to end the sum. If the upper bound is given as infinity, the sigma notation represents an infinite series. Example six, sums in sigma notation. Uh, this, we're going to plug, the, so the sum is equal to, we're going to plug one in, which is four minus three, which is one, plus, we're going to plug two in, that's going to be eight minus three, that's five. We're going to plug three in, 12 minus three is nine. We're going to plug four in, 16 minus three is 13, and we plug five in, 20 minus three is 17. So this is equal to, let's say, six, 15, 28, uh, 45. For letter B, we're going to start with 3, so we're going to plug 3 in. 18 minus 3 over 2 plus, plug 4 in, 24 minus 3 over 2, uh, plug 5 in, 30 minus 3 over 2, plug 6 in, 36, actually that's going to be a plus, 36 minus 3 over 2, and then when we plug 7 in, we get 42 minus 3 over 2. That's a 2. So 18 minus 3, we got 15 halves plus 21 halves plus uh, 27 halves plus 33 halves and then plus, uh, there's going to be 39 halves. So we got 15 and 21, that's 36. And 27 is 63. Another 33 is 96. And 39 is 5, 10, 135 halves.